Welcome back to Disney Marvels for week of sep September 8th, 2019. This is episode 56. Disney Marvels, the show about Disney, Marvel, Lucasfilm, Muppets, Pixar, Fox, the parks, and much, much more. If it has to do with Disney, it's fair game. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. Whether you're planning your next Disney park cruise vacation, park vacation, or you just don't know where to start, be sure to contact our friends, Destinations with Character Travel, the people who I turn to, the official travel partner of Disney Marvel's podcast. Email them at info at destinationswithcharacter.com or visit their website, www.destinationswithcharacter.com and be sure to tell them that the Disney Marvel podcast sent you. And if you do so, you'll receive a special guest. Stay tuned to the end of the show for details. And now, for the news. Sadly, off the heels of Hurricane Doraine, one of the more destructive hurricanes to come across the Atlantic in recent time, the Walt Disney Company, led by Disney Cruise Line, has committed more than $1 million in cash in uh, kind support to help relief and recovery efforts for those in the Bahamas affected by the hurricane. Other than that, that's about it for the news, and we will be back after this short break. And now, on with the show. Tomorrow, and in the years ahead, it is my earnest hope that you and all other children in our nation will become real ones in every sense, guarding and holding fast to the principles of liberty and justice for all. It's been... It's been a long 18 years. And what I'm talking about is not just any 18 years, particularly this week. This week um, may not be the most joyous of episodes, and I, I apologize, but I do feel it's a subject that I, I always feel strong about and at some point does deserve the honor of being talked about. As, as difficult it is for someone like myself, um, people who've been around to remember it, lived through it, knew somebody who experienced it, experienced it themselves, or lost someone because of it. And I'm talking very, very much about September 11th, 2001. And what I, I'm going to talk about is thinking back in a little bit of moment in history what what did the Disney company do not what happened in particular I want to talk about what happened at Walt Disney World on that day and for us that had been to Disney before that we could think of a time of Walt Disney World at the at the parks that you can there wasn't security gate checks um, in front of the, the parks. You just, you walked up, you got in line, you showed your ticket, because there was no magic bands back then. You entered the park, and you went on your way. At that point, you would go get your Fast Pass, go to whichever attraction you wanted to, see what time the Fast Pass was, get whatever tickets you needed. Usually, you may give your tickets at that point to, to one person. They'd hit all the rides and come back. And then you just go on your merry way. Well, I mean, this is just after the millennial celebration. There was the big uh, Mickey hand and wand on the side of Spaceship Earth with the stars on it. And um, just, it, it was different, but the same. And then... That was September. That would have been September tenth, two thousand one. The next day, September eleventh, same thing. People entered into the parks without any care or any worry. Just get in line, present your ticket, go through the ticket stands, and enter their parks. A couple hours later, what happened is something that's never happened at a Disney park before. 
and God willing will never happen again the cast members a lot of cast members were gathered in the break room particularly the management's watching the television reports on what was going on in New York City at that time in Washington DC and over the fields of Pennsylvania in disbelief like the rest of America and there was an announcement the uh, managers were told they Disney had ordered the parks closed for security reasons and most if you haven't worked for the Disney company or you're not as aware about the parks particularly Walt Disney World is on the Department of Security's list of potential terrorist attack locations this is not necessarily a secret this isn't something particularly if you work at the Disney parks that you are aware of or is made aware to you um, in case of a nuclear attack or different things so Disney knowing this and seeing what was going on decided it is in everyone's best interest even though there was no information we're closing the parks what happened was the managers they shut down the rides and they shut down the stores that forced all the guests and the restaurants forced all the guests out into the streets the cast members were instructed to basically create a chain link uh, fence almost they held hands linked arms and made their way from the back of the parks up forward forcing all the guests in the parks to the main street or to the main area hub of whatever park they were in and out of the park security followed behind the cast members to make sure that no one had gone through no one snuck in and stayed behind because again no one knew what was going on no one completely could understand what had just happened or no one knew what could possibly be happening next. History has taught us the events ended at that point um, as far as the attacks within the United States. That day, no one knew. No one knew, no one understood. And no one knew could think of what happened next. My own personal experience, I was working in a mall in New Jersey and I was kind of, I was, as I was getting ready for work that day, I saw the events unfolding. I was listening to the events on the radio as I drove to work. In the mall itself, I didn't have any connection to the outside world. This was well before smartphones, tablets, any of that type of stuff. Uh, and within an hour of the towers collapsing, the mall decided that they were closing. So we were all instructed to shower stores and we left. I got home where I lived at that point. I was not actually too far from the city and I could smell the refuge, the, the stench in the air because it was, I was literally, I was downwind from everything. And it was, it was quite unnatural. But again, you just did not know what could possibly happen next. Everyone just kind of walked around in a daze. Well, it's the same thing happened in Florida. So the parks were closed. Disneyland, nobody actually had entered in because of the time delay. The park closed before anyone got in. So in the second time in history that Walt Disney World, uh, Disneyland had been closed, the first time being whenever JFK was assassinated this being now the second time in history the to accommodate guests the resorts handed out food for the most part food and as they didn't necessarily charge for the food they also um, kept the 
it kept entertainment going. Um, the movies, theaters were thro showing movies. The they had characters walking up and down on the boardwalk at the the boardwalk hotel uh, resort, and they they tried to uh, accommodate the guests the best as possible, understanding the situation that was going on at that time. The pool stayed up open till midnight, and they tried to make the best of the worst situation possible. The, the worst situation meaning what was going on in the world. People were on vacation. A lot of people were now stuck there because of the, all the airplanes were grounded, and the airplanes were grounded for quite some time. And uh, my wife was actually stuck in Florida. She wasn't in Walt Disney World. She was in Tampa. She was actually not too far where President Bush was at that point, unbeknownst to her. Um, she would find this out a little bit later. But whenever she, she was at a business meeting, when she left the meeting to go back to her hotel, she saw snipers on buildings and rooftops. Um, the amount of security that all of a sudden appeared was unbelievable. And... She was stuck in Florida. She couldn't get a flight back, obviously, because there was no flights. So she rented a car. She asked the car rental company, what you know, what were you going to do if we took this car out of uh, state? Well, you can't do that, she was told. Well, I understand that, but I need to get home. Well, you can't take the car out of state. Well, what will happen if I did? Well, she found a company that said, you know what? You can do it. Go ahead. So she drove back. Um... She was with her mother at this time. And she drove back from Florida back to New Jersey. A lot of people had to do that because, again, they couldn't fly. Other people were just stuck there until the flights resumed. And Disney did the best they could to accommodate and help these people. Um, the next day, the parks did open. But overnight, security tables popped up in front of the parks, in front of the gates, uh, and they started that's when the security checks started and now it's become such a commonplace thing it, they've made permanent buildings which is when you think about it it's been 18 years and a lot of these permanent buildings are just being put in place now um, that I find a little bizarre but it is what it is so these type of things you know this is type of stuff that changed the world and, and did change the parks but in some ways maybe for a little bit of the better well, I'm going to end this episode short but um, do you have any memories from that time that you would be willing to share were you at the parks or just at home you know put it up on our Facebook group um, if you feel comfortable talking about it and uh, Facebook is www.facebook.com slash Disney Marvel's podcast. Again, the Facebook group is www.facebook.com slash Disney Marvel's podcast. You can also join us on the Twitter. That's at Disney Marvel's. Again, our Twitter handle is at Disney Marvel's. You can also email the show. Any suggestions, any questions, any comments, any questions you'd like answered on the show, please send them to Disney Marvels at gmail.com. Again, the show's email is Disney Marvels at gmail.com. You could also leave voice messages through the anchor.fm app. I want to thank you for the time that you have spent with us. I know how precious your time is and how little time everyone has nowadays. Life has become so busy, so crazy that the fact that you've spent any time with us on this show, with this show I appreciate it if you could just take a moment more and leave a review on iTunes I'd appreciate it, it just helps get the show um, get out information about the show let more people know about the show or even just tell people about the show uh, that works too the more people in this Disney family the better I did something that Walt believed in and I completely agree with and next time you are planning your next Disney vacation, as I said at the beginning of the show, here's the special announcement. Destinations with Character Travel is a Disney earmarked agency specializing in Disney cruises and resort vacations and in the business of making your dreams come true. Made up of past cast members, 
annual pass holders, lifelong Disney fans, and world travel enthusiasts. They are in the know regarding all aspects of your travel. Whether your travels are t talking, uh, taking you to Disney parks, on ocean cruises, or a sunny resort stay, they have the destinations and the service level you make to make your vacations a truly magical one. Find out how they can take the stress and hassle out of your vacation so you can enjoy yourself. Do what I do. Book a Disney cr vacation through Destinations with Character Travel. And to my listeners, if you book a Disney five-night package with a four-day hopper uh, with them, you will get a free 25 Disney gift card just by mentioning the Disney Marvel podcast. Contact them now at www.destinationswithcharacter.com or email them at info at destinationswithcharacter.com. And again, be sure to tell them that you heard about them on the Disney Marvel podcast. Whatever you're facing out there, whatever troubles, whatever strife, whatever heartache, or impossible situations you find yourself in never give up never give in never stop believing in yourself because you know what you are worth it you are stronger than that and you have the strength within you to overcome whatever impossibilities you are now facing and to achieve greatness be your own hero never give up never give in and I'd like to end the show this week with a quote, of course, from Walt Disney. Once a man has tasted freedom, he will never be content to be a slave. That's why I believe that this frightfulness we see every day today is only temporary. Tomorrow will be better for as long as America keeps alive the ideas of freedom and a better life. All men will want to be free and share our ways of life. These must be so much. This must be so much that I should have said this, but I haven't. What I will say now is just what most of us are probably thinking every day. I thank God and America for the right to live and raise my family under the flag of tolerance, democracy, and freedom. That's from Walt Disney. Thank you again for listening, everyone. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.